Perspective is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, Ash and I, we got to town about two months ago. And I walk into our apartment, and the first thing I do is crack up laughing. And the reason for this is the last time I lived in Asheville, I lived in a 3,000 square foot house on top of a mountain in the middle of six acres with a huge stone fireplace and a deck off the bedroom with a picture window that went on forever, hot tub. And if I had gone into this apartment from there, my first reaction would have been, what a dump. But because I was coming from Los Angeles, where I had been living in a one-bedroom, one-bath, 700-square-foot apartment, where the only view I had was of the other buildings next door, I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> same apartment, same circumstance, different reaction. And I could see that. I could see it when I walked in that that was the case, that I was going to have a different reaction to this. And it got me thinking about how we use perspective. Now, most of the time, how we use it has to do with circumstances that allow us to see things in different ways. Like, for instance, I had the circumstance of coming from this really tiny apartment, so it was really easy to go, yay, even though I had this other circumstance in the back of my mind, which is what led me to see how different perspectives can really impact the circumstance that you're having. And I've always been a person who's thought, not always would be wrong, but ever since I got into this teaching, and I got really good at this teaching, I've, I've realized more and more about choosing my perspective. And when I choose that perspective, it really changes the situation in ways that I couldn't have actually expected sometimes, but it always makes things feel better. And from a place of feeling better. Now, have you ever tried treating when you feel like crap, right? <laughs> I mean, you spend so much time in those first two steps just trying to lift yourself up. But if you're already lifted up because you got a perspective that has you laughing or thinking good about stuff, treatment gets a lot easier, doesn't it? Am I the only one that has that experience? All right. So I'm out in California, and I talked about this the last time I was here, how my first week as senior minister of the Burbank Church all these different things went wrong. And thank God for science of mind because I was able to treat, but there was this other thing that going on as well. Many years ago, when I was living here in Asheville, I created and was director of the first uh, suicide crisis hotline in Asheville. And in the three years I ran it, we took 10,000 calls and we didn't lose a single person. So it went really well. But here's, here's what I want to tell you about that. Oh, John Waterhouse was the president of my board when I ran that, uh, Dr. John Waterhouse. And he only left that position when he became president of a larger organization called Centers for Spiritual Living. So it was wonderful having him on the board and working with him in that way. It was really fun. So I trained about 60 different people to, as volunteers to be on the phones, to take calls, because we were 24-hour hotline. But the very first, uh, very first session I took myself, and about 2 o'clock in the morning, we got our very first call. And it was a woman who said, I have a razor blade to my throat, and you have 10 seconds to tell me why not to slice it. That's life and death. That's life and death right there in your face. And what I learned, by the way, that woman, like everybody else, lived. In fact, you know, th through three years, we got plenty of calls from her, and she started to calm down a little bit, because I'd been well-trained and well-trained others, and so that's how that worked. So it really did work out. But what I learned about being confronted with life and death is it gives you a perspective on when something isn't. How many times have you been upset about something that wasn't life and death? <laughs> Am I the only one? 
So here I am in Burbank thinking to myself, this isn't life and death, whether they close the center or not, whether this goes bad, whether that goes bad, whatever. It's going to work out. And so I was able to actually laugh at what was going on, which put me in a better mood. So when I treat it, it actually makes it more powerful when you come from that place. And sure enough, the place turned around and we you know, had a really nice run while the time I was out there. And that's the beauty of taking a perspective that actually is useful, serves you, can build you, finding that perspective. Devon, last week, was talking about how on, at what a wild weekend she had where in, uh, closing fell through, and then her, you know, she had a reaction to that which always brings me to my favorite teaching of Dr. Barbara Waterhouse, which is, it's not what you do first, it's what you do second. Right? Because we all have a reaction. I know I do. Maybe I'm the only one. But Devon had hers, and then she just went, wait a minute. That just means something's better is going to come along. Went into that mode, treated with that, and then all of a sudden winds up selling the house for 25 grand more than the asking price. Huh? That's how this stuff works, right? But it took the shift of perspective. What a great change of perspective, right? This, something better must be coming along. That's a nice shift of perspective. And that's what we can do when we feel like we're in trouble, when something's going like this. Find a perspective that actually is useful. Because the one of, oh my God, I'm hopeless, I'm helpless, oh my God, what's gonna happen here, isn't. It just isn't helpful. I've always been one about practical spirituality, right? I wanna see the results of that. I wanna experience it. And so when I, when I play with all this, all the science of mind stuff and spirituality and new thought and all this, I like to, you know, I'm willing to, to try it out. I'll go, you know. When, when um, uh, there was years ago, like, I don't know, 18, 19 years ago, we, we, we had, um, I'm not going to remember her name right now, but the leader in, you know, Af uh, prosperity, and, and, and Barbara's mentor, Edwin Gaines, thank you, was up here, and, 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 she, was, and she was challenging us. She was challenging us to, to create money out of nothing. And then Barbara and John used to, you know, I th that's the prosperity thing they're doing. It used to be called the unexpected income prosperity class, and you only got to talk if you came up with income that was completely unexpected. And I was like, okay, I'm willing to play with this. I'll, I'll play with these ideas. I will know absolutely that $10,000 is showing up in my life. Now, I know you're not supposed to pick a number, but I'd done this class a couple of times and had a few bucks show up, and I was tired of a few bucks showing up. So I decided to pick a number. <laughs> and then about halfway through the class, I get a call saying that a relative that I hadn't spoken to in 30 years had died and left me $10,000. <laughs> I thought, this stuff works, right? But the change in perspective, it's such so funny how we can use that and use it in ways that maybe we don't even expect. So a few days ago, and I guess it's almost a week ago now, I was in... Um, the Arbor North Carolina Arboretum. I love that place. I absolutely love that place. And I looked at the trail map and thought, ah, oh, the place isn't closed. How could you get lost in a place like this? <laughs> and then I found myself lost <laughs> with my dog, wondering, having no clue how to get back to where the car was. And we'd been walking about almost five miles at this point. And I don't know that exactly. I could just tell you from the wobbliness that was starting to happen in my legs. And I had the idea that I was lost. And then I realized that really wasn't a perspective that was helpful. And so then I remember Jana Stanfield's song. She has this great song. She, she's one of the co-writers of a song called Amazing Things, right? which we did a few weeks ago. 
Um, anyway, she has this other song goes, I'm not lost, I'm exploring. And I started singing that in my head and immediately got a better attitude about it. And my legs stopped wobbling. And all of a sudden, I felt more strength. And I kept walking and walking. And finally, we ran into somebody who guided me to the wrong place. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in going to the wrong place, I, I was, I, it was at least a landmark that I could, then could use to get to where I was going. And so finally made it back to the car, you know, six miles later. <laughs> so it was a long afternoon, but, but, I, but I, I don't know what would have happened if I would have stayed in that wobbly place of, oh my God, oh my God, right? That's what we're doing here. That's what science of mind is about. Change your thinking, change your life. Well, I say beyond that, change your perspective. Change how you're looking at something. There's so many ways to look at stuff. You know, I, I, my wife loves to say there are multiple there are multiple perspectives. That's true, but let's make sure we find one that actually is helpful. Because a lot of times we don't, right? We get stuck in one that's not. And so then we have to treat from that down place and to lift ourselves up, and I find that to be harder. And, you know, if that's the best you can do, that's great. But what I offer here is all of us have an ability to look for perspectives that because we've lived lives and so we have multiple perspectives within us that we can grab onto when we need them, if we're willing to do that. You get a diagnosis and you can sit in, oh my God, here's a diagnosis. Or you can find another perspective, what's the blessing here? What can I learn from this? Where am I growing with this? It can be an illness, it could be a loss of a relationship, it could be horrible stuff. And yet, there is, since we're still alive and still living and still growing, right? I mean, that's a perspective that I like to remember as often as I can, is that since I'm still on planet Earth, still breathing, still in this body, there must be something more here in this circumstance, since everything is for my good, that I simply haven't found yet. So let me play around with this until I find it, or at least until I find a perspective that will help me enjoy whatever it is that's going on better. And so there's this guy in our movement who has had cancer ongoing. He, it, it comes in remission, and then he gets it again, and it goes in remission. Uh, named, uh, Norm Bouchard, who, who posts on Facebook uh, the different outfits he wears when he goes for chemo. <laughs> and it's always incredibly funny. I mean, he, he, he wears these cartoon outfits. He's, he's always dressed incredibly flamboyant, and it has inspired thousands upon thousands of other people who are going through the same thing. So there's that blessing in that for him that he is inspiring thousands. He has found a perspective that actually works in the midst of what for some people is, you know, can just bring you down. And so that's what's possible here when we're looking at all these different ways. And the, thing, the other thing I want to bring to this is that there's no such thing as a generic perspective that works. Let me give you an example of that. One day, you know how often we hear the term, let go. Just let go. Just let go. Right? Okay. Well, one day I'm hiking in these mountains. This was many years ago. And I reached this spot that where it, uh, the rocks are more slippery than I'd ever imagined rocks could be. It wasn't just that they were wet. It, it, and, and when I looked around at the area that, that I needed to get to to continue on the path, over there, there was blood on the rocks, and, and there was equipment that was scattered. I mean, this was clearly in a, a spot that was not only dangerous, but people had, had issues here. But I did what I have done many times in my life, which was, I can handle this. I can do it. And so I simply stepped out onto the rock. It was a simple step. And before I knew it, I had flown down, flown off the edge. There was one tree growing out of the side, and I latched onto it as I'm hanging there about 75 feet up. 
And the first thought I had was, this is not a time to let go. <laughs> I squinched over, got myself back up, and obviously I lived, I'm here. It was quite an adventure. And that's not the wildest time I've had. <laughs> <laughs> but it gives you an idea of perspective, right? Life and death. I, 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 uh, Kira, Ash's daughter, was saying the other day that, that I have had more close encounters with death than her entire family combined, and that's probably true, but it has given me a perspective on life that's really very, you know, different from a lot of folks who get upset and are worried about a deadline or this, that, and the other thing, and all I can think of is it's not life and death. You know, uh, this morning I was, we were, I was supposed to play uh, Live Like You're Dying in the acoustic guitar, but we were having trouble with that this morning. So I went to the electric. It's not life and death. You know, when you're looking at stuff, what perspective are you using? Are you, are you using a perspective that's actually building up your stress? Or are you finding us a perspective that allows you to relax into it? Because the truth is, is we actually get better results when we're not stressed. Stress is not helping you get the results you want. It's just not. So you might as well pick a perspective that lets you relax, you'll get better results. Right? So, my last story. I was motorcycle riding. And I was way out, I don't know where, I don't remember, it was a very long time ago. I was riding on this motorcycle, and I'm taking these turns like this. And I come into this one turn where my thought goes, I'm going too fast. And then that other thought that I have that has always gotten me into trouble goes, nah, you can do it. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm on the ground. The bike is dragging me about 20, 25 feet underneath it. There's gravel and road inside my arm. My legs torn up underneath the bike. And I'm lying there all by myself in the middle of nowhere, no cell service, wondering, you know, uh, and blood. You know, I'm bleeding pretty badly. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I, I hear in my head music from one of those action-adventure movies. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I am now the hero of my own action-adventure movie. <laughs> and I crack up laughing. And sure enough, it gave me the extra strength I needed to pull myself out from underneath the bike, tear up my t-shirt, just like you see in the movies, you know, tie up my leg and my arm, pick up my bike, and get back on it, and start riding the 50 miles to the nearest hospital, which was Mission. While I'm riding, it starts pouring rain. <laughs> And so now I'm laughing even harder because I'm thinking, this is an incredible adventure. I'm going to get to tell this story one day <laughs> as I'm riding to the hospital, right? And I get there and they take a look at my injuries and they're pulling road out of my arm and my leg. And they're like, there's no way you rode yourself here. And I said, who else was going to do it? I don't think I could have when I first was lying there after the accident thinking to myself, oh my God, I'm alone out here under my bike and it's 700 pounds. What am I going to do? It was the change in perspective that really allowed me to get behind it, to get out and probably save my own life. Not the first time. <laughs> but that's what's really possible with this. There are so many people, it, not, nothing makes me laugh harder than when somebody says, be realistic. <laughs> There's a perspective that doesn't help anybody ever. <laughs> right? There are things going on in this world that are so beyond the physical plane. The longer you are doing this stuff in science of mind, taking this in, taking the classes, practicing, Practice, practice, practice. How many in here have walked across fire? Yeah, 
You know. How could you do that? Didn't you get burned? How could you do that? Let's be realistic. That's not possible. Perspective. Find one that works, that's going to be helpful in that moment. For me, it seems to be Psalms. For you, it'll, you know, it may be whatever, you know, what, what you have to pull on. But I promise you, what I can promise you is that there is one. There's a perspective that will lift you up. There is a perspective that will help you so that, so that the treatment gets even deeper than it would if you didn't find that perspective. Maybe you treat first and then find a perspective. I don't know. I just know that it, we call this change your thinking, change your life. And sometimes those changes need to happen in moments we need the most. Right? That's the power and presence. I love this stuff. I love how it has allowed me to go do some of the things I have done in my life that I now get to tell stories about. And maybe I shouldn't have done, but I did. <laughs> I'm not saying go do crazy stuff. I am saying that in the course of life, things happen. And when they do, a perspective can pull you through the way it did Devon, the way it has me, the way I've seen others, pull you through those times in a way that can bring you joy, laughter, in situations where you'd never think that was possible. When I first met my wife, she was um, a little disconcerted by how often I'd be laughing about something. Like all throughout the day. She sees me, I'm just, you know, I get a thought, I'm doing something. Because life is just this incredible adventure, wondrous thing. And there can be so much joy in each and every moment all about perspective. Play with it, practice with it. I do every day. Every day, I'm looking in the mirror, looking at my wife, looking at my dog, looking at the computer, thinking of different perspectives to see it in. I practice with that. I, I tell you, it's amazing what it can offer you in any given moment when something goes not exactly the way you'd expected it to. Wondrous. That's what we have here. That's what's possible that's what makes this teaching so incredible. I love you. Thank you.